James Elder, IFL TV, MTK Global Women. I've got promoter Steve Goodwin. We're here at York Hall. Firstly, nice to bump into you, Steve. How are you, sir? Yeah, very good, James. Be glad for the break, though. This is fastly <laughs> approaching on all of us. It has been a long, old season, this one, hasn't it? Yeah, no, it has, but it's been very good. There's been some real good highlights, and uh, get ready to resume in February. Now, break it down for me. Give me the highlights of the year. What was Goodwin Promotions and your personal highlights for 2017? A strange one, really. It was probably Jamani Camiro winning the Southern Area title, getting a kid that's unhelded, unfancied, a uh, lovely kid, and getting him a title shot and winning a Southern Area in his sixth fight. Because I get as much pleasure from the smaller kids winning titles as anything else. And for him and his trainer, Barry O'Connell, that was something very special, and that would be my highlight of, of 2018. Big point as well. And you've had some big moments. You've certainly put on a lot of shows this year. What's the... the total of shows put on by Goodwin Promotions this year? Goodwin Boxing, which is a franchise, has had uh, 11 shows in total this year. Um, and then we've worked, obviously, with David Hay on his show at the O2 Indigo, which was really good. So, you know, overall, we're looking to be involved in even more shows next year, probably 17 or 18 shows in total. So we're looking forward to 18, because we've got a lot of dates for a lot of our boxers to uh, manage to, to get out, so it's going to be a very busy year next year. Well, you're going to need a lot of dates, because I know you've got over 100 fighters in the stable as it stands at the moment, and you're always looking to add to that. I know you're always keen to talk to new talent and develop new talent. How do you make time to manage 100 fighters and keep them all keep them all active, keep them all busy? Well, we keep, I mean, I spent last Saturday from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening it's talking to everybody and then I spend evenings doing it as well and then we plot we have, we have them all plotted on, on the campaigns so everybody's got a campaign that we look after so everybody knows what they're doing where they're going we literally run it like clockwork and they've all got their aspirations and we just aim to fulfill them um, we're looking for good quality we just signed Dion Juma yesterday two times ABA champion 7-0 and professional who was with the Sourlands so we're adding quality it's not just quantity it's about the quality and we've got a lot of quality and a lot of champions Going forward, we've got Arthur Anik Bell fighting for the English title on the Sowland show Indeed. in the home corner. So we, we've got a hell of a lot to look forward to and a lot of good quality fighters to win titles next year. Some big fights going on. I know you've been working with David Hay and Haymaker Promotions in doing the undercard and getting the good win boxers some great opportunities in them shows. But I want to talk a little bit about Hay's rematch with Tony Bellew. Yeah. How do you see that playing out? I think that I think the fight is all about what David Hay turns up on the day. I think, in reality, I mean, David Hay's two wins, realistically, they didn't, t they didn't tell us a lot. What he showed against Tony Bellew in the first fight was he had, had a lot of heart, but what nobody's been able to see is what the current David Hay has got. If David Hay has got 80% of what he had, then he's probably going to be too big for Tony Bellew, but I don't think anybody is really going to know until the day, and I think that's what's intriguing about the fight. Also on Tyson Fury, potential, potential return in 2018, ready to shake up the heavyweight division. What are your thoughts on that? I think he's a great character for boxing. I think um, if Tyson does, does go back and he, he's as good as he was against Klitschko, I think he could upset the apple cart with AJ. That's my opinion. I think he's got everything in his armory to the, probably the one heavyweight in the world that could shake up AJ, probably the only one, in my opinion, that could. Um, so, yeah, I think he could come back. And he's great, he's great for boxing, but... You know how much will he lose from all that time out? But and will he have the appetite to go back? And you know, does he do it for the money? Does he does he do it for the fame? What does he do it for? And we know he's had problems outside the ring. How much is that going to affect him? And I think a very similar thing to what we saw about David just now. What does Tyson Fury bring now to the table, the current version? And that again is what we've got to wait and see. But it's exciting times of him coming back. What's going on for 2018? When's the first Goodwin show planned? What's the strategy? What's going what's gonna to be the, the movements, as, so to speak, for the, for the start the, of the new year? It's about developing a lot of our fighters towards titles. We're working on a show with David Hay um, early in the new year, um, which I'm sure David will announce very shortly. And then we've got, um, there's a couple of Goodwin boxing shows with a couple of the promoters in March, at least two, maybe three. Uh, we've got a lot of fighters to get out and keep busy and it's really about building competitive cards, title shots and just uh, delivering the aspirations and we're looking to, to add probably another eight or nine champions next year, Southern Area and above. Steve Gooden, you're doing a tremendous job. Thank you very much for talking to TV. Great to get you on the channel, sir. Have yourself a good Christmas and we will catch you on the other side. Same to you, James, and well done for all the work you've done this year. It's been fantastic.